A few weeks ago, I'm sitting in my living room doing some work on my laptop when I get an email with the subject line that says, collaboration request, Dehancer plugin. If you're unfamiliar with what Dehancer is, Dehancer is a film emulation plugin for DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, Lightroom, and several other applications that allows you to emulate the look of film on your photo and video content. So they sent me a license key and I downloaded the plugin. We're gonna walk through the installation process together so you and I both know how it goes. But first, we're gonna need some footage to apply the effects to. So let's go out and snag some footage. So I just downloaded Dehancer Pro and unzipped it. And let's open up the zipped folder and see what we've got. Let's check out the quick guide. So Dehancer plugin and the node sequence. Normally Dehancer OFX plugin should be placed at the end of the processing chain. Then other additional color correction nodes, white balance, color wheels, curves, etc., and local mask can be added before the Dehancer node. Occasionally some specific nodes not related to color correction may be placed after Dehancer. For example, sharpen filters, etc. To better understand the workflow integration principles, treat Dehancer as a virtual film in which you are shooting an already prepared and properly lit scene. This makes it easier to figure out why all basic corrections and masks should be applied before Dehancer or the input section of the plugin. All right, to install Dehancer, let's double click on the application. I'll go ahead and click continue. I accept the license. Clearly I read it all. Install. Hit done. Now let's go ahead and open up DaVinci Resolve. So now we have our footage in at the timeline and I've gone through and picked out some selects from our little shoot this morning. Next, I'm going to adjust some color settings. So we'll come down here to the project settings, go to DaVinci YRGB Color Manage, uncheck that, come down here, go to Rec 709A and hit save. Not much happened, but that's because we have to tell Resolve what type of color profile our footage is. So we'll go ahead and select all of our footage, come down here to input color space. And I shot this in Sony S Gamut 3 Cine S Log 3. And that will bring all of our footage into a good color space. From there, let's go over to the color tab. I'll go ahead and add my nodes like normal. We have primaries, our color balance. I typically add a curve here. And then at the end, we'll add Dehancer for now. We'll go over here to our effects bin and search for Dehancer. Drop that onto our node. And our source is Rec. 709, so we're good there. And from here, we can kind of just mess with all of these settings. I have the pro version here, so this gives us full access to all the film emulation settings, film grain, halation, bloom, whole bunch of goodies in here. So let's kind of dive in and see what kind of effects we can get. Let's go down to our film profile. Also, if the film profiles aren't here, there's a button you can click to update them and they'll all get downloaded from Dehancer. We got some Polaroid prints here. Let's stick with the Kodak Porta 400. We'll go from there. Our print now is on linear. Let's see what this does if we change some of these. I like that. 2383. Lots of things in here to mess around with. Here's our film grain. I think we can see it if I zoom in here a little bit. You can see it a little bit more in this area right here. We'll go ahead and check out some of these other ones. 8 millimeter, super noisy, 50, 500 ISO, strife 50 ISO, it's more manageable, halation, halation you can really see in these high contrast areas with the brightness and the leaves here, we can mess around and check out some other settings here, try our super 8, that could be pretty cool if you're going for a super 8 film look, 
Let's try some other ones. 16 millimeter. 16 millimeter, no rim jet. Don't know what that means. Let's go ahead and leave it at the 35 mil. We have bloom, film damage, film breath or breathing. Don't know what that is. I think that's like adding a little bit of flicker here. Let's zoom into a dark area and see if we can see anything. Yeah, I think that's what it's doing. We have gate weave. It's like it's making it a little bit wobbly almost. We have a vignette, which is always nice if you're trying to emphasize focus on anything. And it looks like here we can also export our own LUTs based off of some of these settings. So lots of things we can do here. Let's copy and paste this onto some other clips and see what we're looking, see what we're looking like. Does a ton to the footage. This looks pretty sweet where you can see the, uh, the halation happening here. There's a before, there's an after. Man, you could create some really sweet looks with this. Let's go ahead and copy that over here. Let's check out some other kinds of film profiles here. So we got Kodak, we got the Porta 160, which is what we were just kind of working with. Would you film? Ooh, that looks really nice. The instructions for the plugin, they say to put all of your typical adjustments prior to Dehancer. Think of it as feeding Dehancer perfectly exposed and color balanced footage. That way you're not doing those corrections after all of the film effects are applied. So we'll come in here to our color balance and kind of tinker with this a little bit. Copy that. Man, this looks so good. I love the flexibility where you can have just the film print or you can have the film print plus all these other things. So I can turn off film compression, expand. I can turn off the film grain and the halation and just maintain the film print look if that's what I'm going for. So this looks great, but I want to pull in some footage that has skin tone so we can take a look and see what that looks like. So here's a clip I've got that's got some nice skin tones in it. So let's go ahead and copy this grade over to here. All right, let's go and turn off. Let's change our film grain to uh, 35. 50 ISO, turn off halation, turn this on to put our film grain actually at 65 millimeter, 50 ISO. Let's find a different film emulation as well. Oh, it's kind of nice. Not too bad. Dehancer is a pretty powerful plugin. It gives you a lot of flexibility with dialing in how you want your image to look. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of skeptical going into this. I've used a lot of plugins in the past and they never work very well inside of a piece of software such as Resolve or Adobe Premiere Pro. In my mind, I was thinking, Resolve's got its own film grain effect, it's got its own halation effect, and you can achieve the bloom look with the glow effect inside of Resolve. So I was a little skeptical going into this, but the plugin installation is super easy, and it's super intuitive, and it's really easy to just dive in and start messing around and figuring out what looks good and what you want your video to look like. So having never used Dehancer before today, I gotta say, two thumbs up for me. It's a great piece of software, and I can see myself really utilizing this in my editing process moving forward.
So if you like what you saw today and you're thinking about picking up Dehancer, use my code down below and get 10% off your order. And it also helps support the channel because I get a little kickback from any purchases that you make using my referral code. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button down below and smash that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on future content. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.